The scriptural reading is from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 9, verses 1 through 8. And after getting into a boat, he crossed the sea and came to his own town. And just then, some people were carrying a paralyzed man lying on a bed. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. Then some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. But Jesus, perceiving their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier, to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, stand up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he then said to the paralytic, stand up, take your bed, and go to your home. And he stood up and went to his home. When the crowds saw it, they were filled with awe, and they glorified God, who had given such authority to human beings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oftentimes, as we read in today's reading from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 9 and verses 1 through 8, we do not realize that there are two sets of healing taking place in this story. Physical healing as well as spiritual healing. We get so caught up in the physical part of the healing that we miss the spiritual. We see the man bringing this sick paralytic friend on a mattress, on a bed, and hearing Jesus' pronouncement of, stand up, take up your bed, and go to your home. And the man takes up his bed, and he goes home. And like the crowds who are filled with awe, we too are filled with awe at Jesus performing this miracle of healing. And the men who were kind enough to bring their friend to Jesus the point of this passage is about Jesus, who not only can make the man walk, but has the power to forgive the sins of persons. Matthew, in his gospel, is not concerned with the details of the man or the persons opening a part of the roof to let the man in to see Jesus, since there was such a crowd, a large crowd of people, that were preventing them from getting in, as Mark and Luke's Gospels mention. Instead, the focus is on Jesus, who has the ability to forgive sins, to know people's thoughts, and to heal the sick, including this paralyzed man. So, as we are told, Jesus got into a boat, and he crossed over and came to his own city. And then a paralytic man lying on a bed is brought to him. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. And at once, some of the scribes said within themselves, This man is blaspheming. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your thoughts, in your hearts? For which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, stand up and walk. For that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, he then said to the paralytic, stand up, take up your bed, and go to your home. And he stood up and went home. And as we realized, the crowds were filled with awe, and they glorified God for what God had done. But my friends, what does this passage teach us? And first, Jesus has the ability to forgive sins. 
When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. Jesus saw not only the faith of the sick man, but the faith of his friends also. And these four persons' faith was demonstrated by bringing this paralyzed man to Jesus, believing he could heal him. And although the faith of the man is not the major point in the story, it is an important point. It has been said that we cannot believe for, but believe with someone. And I know that you have friends and family and colleagues and co-workers and neighbors who need someone to bring them to Jesus and believe with them that God can and will redeem and forgive them of their sin. It is their faith that will make them right with God. But your faith in God's ability to redeem them is portrayed by our showing them Jesus. The expectation is that we should bring people to Jesus if we believe he can redeem us. But what is also noteworthy here in this story is that while the friends brought their friend to receive physical healing from Jesus, Jesus first gives him spiritual healing. And Jesus does this when he says, your sins are forgiven. It tells us that spiritual healing is even more important than physical healing. It also sends the message that once Jesus heals your spiritual challenges, the physical challenges will fall into place. The Jews in those days associated physical illness with sin. The physical problems may have been as a result of the spiritual problems, they will say. The funny thing is that we often get this wrong. We focus on the physical healing and not on the spiritual aspect. We do not even say like the man who was in the temple with the Pharisees, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. And this is an important prayer that we should all say often, particularly before we go to bed. Nevertheless, by saying to the paralytic that your sins are forgiven, Jesus was demonstrating that he was God. And only God can forgive sin. And no one who describes exclaimed, this man is blaspheming. For only God forgave sins. But Jesus was and is and will always be God. And they miss that point big time. The second thing this passage teaches us is that Jesus knows it all. Not like us who think we know it all. But Jesus is omniscient. He knows everything. Not only does Jesus see the actions which demonstrate the faith of the paralyzed man and his four friends, he could see the faith in their hearts as well. Jesus is able to see into the hearts of the scribes and know their, e their evil thoughts, their very thoughts. But instead of faith, Jesus sees evil in their hearts. And not only does Jesus have the power to forgive sin, he also has the ability to know the hearts of each and every one of us. So Jesus asks the question, which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven? Or to say, stand up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he then said to the paralytic, Stand up, take your bed, and go to your home. Jesus was telling them that it is easier to say that someone's sins were forgiven, that it was more difficult to say that someone's sins were forgiven because there is no need to verify that what was said was actually happening. And that is what Jesus was trying to say that it is easier to say that someone's sins was, were forgiven. But to tell someone to stand up and walk is more difficult 
to do, particularly if the person does not stand up after you say to do so. And yet Jesus demonstrates he can do both. And then the third thing is the healing power of our Lord. Jesus' healings are an important part of his ministry. His ability to heal this man from an illness that in that day was seemingly incurable, to make a man who could not walk to walk was an unbelievable thing to do. And yet Jesus did it. And thus not only does Jesus have the power to forgive sin, but the power to heal as well. And therefore he is God. Mary realized, my friends, that Jesus demonstrates his power to remove the guilt of sin, a sin that separates us from God in those who trust in him. He is willing and ready to say to us as well, your sins are forgiven. For Jesus is the ultimate physician, not only to heal the sick and cast out demons and calm the storms, but he can bring to the human soul something that is important to the health of the soul. Your sins are forgiven. Amen.